Let's take a last look at the valley from the point. Let's not. I'll, I'll buy you a picture postcard when we get back to the hotel instead. <laughs> we really should start back to the hotel, Evelyn. Why? You know it doesn't make any difference if we stay here another month or forever. Why can't we stay a little longer, darling? It's not fair of you to ask me that. You know I can't stand solitude. Solitude at a resort hotel? Oh, come on, Evelyn. What is it that upsets you, darling? I know it isn't the height. I want to go back to town. I can't stand these mountains. Is that so difficult to understand? Yes, darling, it is, considering it was your choice for our honeymoon. I lost my first wife at a resort on the coast of Maine a few days after our wedding. Yes, I know, dear. You do? How? Someone sent me a copy of a Portland newspaper shortly after our engagement was announced. You mean a friend of yours sent it? No. No, it came anonymously. But you'd already told me that your wife had been drowned, so I didn't let the details disturb me. There was nothing I could do. I was swimming in a wave through against a rock. She sank at once. You believe that, don't you? Yes, darling, of course I do. There was an inquest. The coroner's jury said it was an accident. You don't believe what a relative said in the paper, do you? Let's go back to the hotel. We can pack and take the night train if you like. You didn't answer me, Evelyn. A relative said that I'd killed her. Do you believe that? No, I believe you, Gordon. Let's not talk about it anymore. No. No, I've got to know where I stand with you. Do you believe it's possible for anyone to have a sudden, overwhelming desire to kill the person they love? I'd rather not talk about it. I told you I didn't believe what the newspaper said. I... Look at me, Evelyn. You think I killed her, don't you? You're afraid of me. You're afraid I'm going to kill you, too. <laughs> What are you going to do about it, Sheriff? Nothing. I appreciate your coming all the way up here, but it's impossible for me to take action against Gordon Carson. But why? I took the coroner's jury out to the scene of the accident. They're all mountain people, you know, and they were satisfied with Carson's story. Did you find any indication that a piece of the rock did break under her feet? Yes, we even found parts of it down in the valley near Mrs. Carson's body. I can't bring myself to believe that Carson killed her. His grief seemed too real. Sure, his grief looked real when he drowned my sister on their honeymoon. I sympathize with you, Mr. Lee. But you know it's a coincidence for a man to lose two wives in accidents like those. But I'm sure they were accidents. If I were you, Mr. Lee, I'd try to get Carson out of my mind. No good comes of brooding over a thing like that. I'm not looking for vengeance. I believe he's insane. A year ago, he killed my sister. This year, another bride. Who's it going to be next year, Sheriff? Dr. Ordway? You don't remember me, Dr. Ordway. Why, yes. Of course I do. You're Kathleen Massey. I was Kathleen Massey. I'm Mrs. Gordon Carson now. I was married yesterday in Reno. Oh, yeah. How nice. Is it? You know, I'm here on a vacation. I noticed that in the papers. Oh, yes. Doctor's orders, complete rest, no psychiatry, no worrying about other people's problems. I rather suspect that you're your own doctor. <laughs> Won't you sit down, Mrs. Carson? That's good. You may call me Kathleen. You did when I knew you were in the East, you know. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I came to Southern California because the sun is supposed to be energizing. <laughs> I've been here for three days now, and nobody's moved. Please be serious, Dr. Ordway. What is it you want? I'd like you to come to dinner tonight. Oh. I want you to observe my husband. Well, what do you think's wrong with him? He... He may be insane. 
Well, have you any particular reasons for your diagnosis, or is it just a general impression? I found this in the mail when we got in from Reno this morning. Had uh, Carson told you that he'd been married twice? Yes, but he didn't tell me that both women had died in questionable accidents within a week of their marriage. And the letter also says that he made two unsuccessful attempts to take his own life. He didn't tell me that. What do you expect me to do? You're a psychiatrist. I want you to tell me if I'm married to a madman. I'm not as hard as I sound. I, I love Gordon, but... I understand. The address is 3390 Los Feliz Boulevard. All right, I'll be along about 7. Thank you, Dr. Right. Orway. Goodbye. I'm Dr. Ordway. This way, Doctor. Dr. Ordway. Good evening, Dr. Ordway. Good evening. Ordway. I'd like you to meet Barbara and Corey. How do you do? How do you do? And my husband, Gordon. Doctor, may I offer my congratulations? Thank you. Uh, Kathleen's been telling me about you. I'm so glad you could come. Thank you. Hello, Dr. Ordway. Long time no see. Well, well, <laughs> about three years, isn't it? That's right. Mr. Jerome used to pump me for material for his novels. <laughs> <laughs> then you'll take care of Dr. Ordway, Jeb. See that he meets everyone. I hope we can spend some time together later. Yes, thank you. Excuse me. This is Mr. Massey, Kathleen's father, Dr. Ordway. Well, hello, Doctor. I'm glad to know you. How do you do, Mr. Massey? I was just examining this workmanship. I'm fascinated by leather. Uh, Mr. Massey is a harness manufacturer. Yeah. Well, go ahead and ask me. What do you, what, ask what? Well, most people, when they hear that I manufacture harness, they ask me, don't I think the automobile's here to stay? <laughs> <laughs> but you know there are over 15 million horses still in the United States. Oh, I see. And somebody has to make their habit, actually. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Massey's a little odd, but he's a good sort. How well do you know Kathleen? Not very well. I met her casually in the East. I'd completely forgotten her. You may not find her as easy to forget this time. Thank you. Dolores and Miguel Braga. Who are they? The Bragas? Yeah. They're dancers, brother and sister. I'll say that you meet them. Do they work in pictures? No, or they work at a club called the Friars Glen. Seeing them dance is a haunting experience. Hmm? I'll take you over there later. Hey, by the way, Ordway, who's your patient? Kathleen or Gordon? Now, what gave you the idea I'm here professionally? Oh, there's something in the air. I vibrate to mystery, you know. I'm vibrating right now. Yeah? Why? Well, there's a theatrical quality about this gathering. A bride of one day with already a haunting regret in her eyes. Myself, an author of wicked and sinister tales of black souls, and you, a psychiatrist, known by the curiously suggestive title of Crime Doctor. Oh, that's commonplace for Hollywood. And then there's the darkly mysterious dancing braggers, and a servant who isn't a servant. The cast is too good to be wasted. Ordway, I tell you, there's drama in the air. Wait a minute. What do you mean by a servant who isn't a servant? Which one is he? Take him out for yourself. Oh, he may be a comedian engaged to insult some of the guests. No, he looks to me like a man with a mission. Dinner is served. Thank you. 
was secretly hoping I'd be seated next to you. <laughs> What's that man doing here? He's one of the caterers, sir. He's nothing of sort. What do you want from me? Why don't you leave me alone? You've been hounding me for years, following me across the country, poisoning the minds of my friends against me, forcing me always to move on. Now you sneak into my own house and try to break up my marriage. Well, you won't do it, do you hear me? You won't do it. Get out! Why don't you do away with yourself? Or if you haven't the courage for that, have yourself put away in an asylum before you take more lives. Who are you? I'm David Lee. My sister was Carson's first wife, and he murdered her. That's a lie. Coroner's jury said it was an accident. Yes, they also said your second wife died accidentally. But you killed her, too. Well, this was going to be a lovely party. You never can tell who you marry these days. You should not be so hasty to accuse. Come, Dolores, see if we can help Mr. Carson. Did you hire Lee? My word, no, sir. Gordon! Gordon! You people better stay in the living room. Right through the center of the forehead. He didn't miss this time. Don't you think we ought to leave everything just as it is till the police get here? Take a look at this. Um, well, I know Carson shot himself, but if you don't mind, I'd just assume I'd handle the gun. Why not? Nobody but authors bother about fingerprints anymore. Give me police headquarters. Hello? Police headquarters? This is Dr. Ordway speaking. I'm at 3390 Los Feliz Boulevard, the home of Gordon Carson. Got it? All right. Mr. Carson has just been murdered. People do get their heads bashed in while swimming in rocky inlets. And tourists are always falling off mountain precipices. And in other words, David Lee is insane and Carson wasn't. Perhaps they both were out of their minds. Isn't it possible that Lee, popping up here, there, and everywhere, could have driven Carson out of his mind? Dr. Ordway, Captain Birch wants to see you and Mr. Jerome. It's about time they were seeing us. We discovered the body. Come on, Mr. Massey. Where's your daughter? Well, sir, she, she might have gone home. Well, of course, I mean to my home, because I know sometimes things like this give her a headache. Yes, things like this give me a headache, too, Mr. Massey. Yes, I know. It's very trying on everybody. We called your home. She's not there. Well, I'm awfully sorry, then. I have no idea where she is. You sent for us, Captain? Just a minute. Fanning, drive Mr. Massey home. And you stay there, and let me know the second you hear from your daughter. Oh, yes, yes, I'll be glad to do that, Captain Birch. Goodbye, Jeff. Goodbye, Doctor. I'm awfully sorry that this happened. All oh, right, yes. come on, Fanning, because get I'd him, like boy. to see, I will see you again sometime. Yes. You're Dr. Ordway? Yeah, that's right. This is Mr. Jerome, the novelist. <laughs> oh, 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 apparently Captain Birch doesn't like writers. I don't. Well, that's dandy. Do you know where Kathleen Carson went? I thought she was right here. You reported this. There are powder burns on Carson's face, indicating the gun was close to him. The door was locked, the windows barred. Everything points to suicide. Yet you reported it as a murder. Why? It looked like suicide, till I picked up the gun. You picked up the gun? 
Yes, but it wasn't the gun that killed Carson. Remember, we were in the room a few minutes after the shot was fired. The gun was cold. Oh, I get it now. But it was... What are you talking about? Well, Dr. Ordway asked me to handle the gun. He's right, it was cold. A fine thing, playing beanbag with Exhibit A. Well, of course, there was an empty cartridge in it, but that was there for a plant. Uh, if I can be of any assistance to you, you can reach me at my hotel. Wait a minute. The micro cameraman at headquarters will tell us if the bullet in Carson's head came from the gun we found beside the body. Uh oh. Killer hadn't counted on that. He figured on a casual investigation and a verdict of suicide. <sighs> thing like this can't happen on my day off. Well, I hope you're wrong. Well, don't get discouraged, Captain. If the killer was able to leave the gun beside the body, why didn't he shoot him with it? Probably because he couldn't get it until after he killed Carson. All right, then how'd he get out of the room? That room was full of people who'd seen him if he'd left by the door and the windows are barred. Good evening, Mr. Jerome. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening. We have your usual table, sir. You better have. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Jerome has had the same table every night since the Brock has opened here. Right. Show Mr. Jerome to his usual table, Nick. This way, please. about something to eat. Yes, yeah, fine. All right, sir. Our dinner was interrupted by a murder. Uh, bring me club sandwich. Yes, sir. I'll have that, too. Bottle of beer. Yes, Two bottles of beer. Bring the beer right away. Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're about to see an act that is without equal in the entire world. Is their spectacular dance just an illusion, or is there a deeper, more mysterious explanation? Judge for yourselves. Ladies and gentlemen, the incomparable Miguel and Dolores Braga. People should be dancing in the bowl, the symphony orchestra, and 20,000 spectators, instead of dissipating their talents in this musical delicatessen. Tell me, Jeff, do you own a piece of their act? It's like asking a man if he owns a piece of the Northern Lights. That's what Carson came here for every night, what Kathleen, Rencare, all of us come for.
There's the girl, Ordway. Thank you. I'm sure all of you wonder what Mr. Braga did with his partner. Perhaps you think it was a trick performed with mirrors. It wasn't. They're superstitious about mirrors. The truth is, the Bragas have the power to make themselves invisible. How did he do it, Audrey? I enjoy a mystery far too much to want to explain it. You didn't get a chance to know the Braggers at Carson's. They'll stop by the table after they're dressed. We missed you tonight, Mr. Enkere. Yes, I was detained. Has Mr. Jerome left yet? No, he's over there with a friend. Thanks. Oh, Bob. Well, don't tell me you've been in the clutches of the law until just now. Dr. Ordway, you know Enkere. Yes, I do. Uh, the police held me while I thought of places Kathleen might have gone. Hello? Did you have any luck? No. I hate to bring bad news, Jeff, but Captain Birch wants to see you immediately. Uh-oh. Did he mention why? I'm afraid I'm not in his confidence. Huh. Well, Ordway, you'll have to entertain the braggers, unless Bob wants to stick around. Look me up if I go out of circulation. You have anything to worry about. <laughs> Dr. Ordway, could you tell me why Captain Birch is so anxious to get a hold of Kathleen? Does he think she had anything to do with killing Carson? Well, when your husband or wife is murdered, it's customary to stick around for a decent interval. If you know where Kathleen is, uh, I think it's a good idea to tell her to go home. Look lots better than having the police find her. I doubt if Kathleen would do anything I suggested. Where is she? I couldn't betray her if I thought there was any real reason why she should go into hiding. Don't stall. I think Kathleen's fallen under a dangerous influence, or at least an unwholesome one. She's at the Braga's home. Is she in love with Braga? Wait a minute, let's put it another way. Is Braga in love with her? I don't know. Plenty of men soon will be. Kathleen became a rich woman the moment Carson died. Dr. Ordway, if you talk to Kathleen, I think you could persuade her to come home. Wait a minute now, I'm supposed to be on a vacation. But you'd do that much for her, wouldn't you? All right. I'll try and see what I can do. Oh, fine. Thanks. Good luck. Mr. Jerome suggested we come see you, Dr. Ordway. Yes. Uh, I want you to take me to Kathleen Carson. I do not understand your tone. You are connected with the police? Oh, hardly, but the police are looking for Kathleen, and if she doesn't turn up, they'll go after her. I will explain that to her. Oh, no, no, that won't do. I, I must see her myself. Kathleen will not thank me for this, but I suppose if we do not take you, you will tell the police? That's the idea, yes. Then if you are ready, we will leave. Thanks. find our home in ill condition. The former owners neglected it, and the work of reparation goes slowly. Well, then you're planning to live here permanently. 
Yes. We selected this old house in the Santa Monica Mountains because it reminds us of our former home. In a new land, one likes to be surrounded with something of the old. We're adjusting ourselves to new conditions here, but it is difficult. Well, you've adjusted yourselves very nicely to our, our methods of transportation. Or are you from uh, Spain or South America? From Spain. I trust our little dance amused you this evening? More than that, it fascinated and baffled me. We have been doing that dance for 300 years. Miguel means our family has been dancing it for 300 years. We're just about there now. Here's where we turn off. Yes, certainly. My sister went on ahead to tell Kathleen you were here. It seems incredible that such magnificent solitude could only be 40 minutes from Hollywood, does it not? Yes, it does. You will please wait. Come in, Dr. Ordway. Thank you. Candles and lanterns would be preferable in this fine old house. But if you expect friends to visit you, you must make some concessions. Needs tidying up a bit. Yes. I can't make up my mind what to do with it. Come. We'll go to the remodeled part of the house. Please be seated. Thank you. Uh, well, this is a little more cheerful. I'll see what's keeping Kathleen. You will excuse me? Surely. asleep when we arrived. You will excuse me if I do not take refreshment with you. We are rising early in the morning to go horseback riding with the neighbors. Oh, do you keep horses? Uh, not at present, but some of the neighbors have been kind enough to place some at our disposal. You do not care for the wine? Oh, yeah. Yes, I rather like it. It's a very old wine. The wine of my family. Oh, do you mean you brought it all the way from Spain? We brought many things from Spain. You see, we are not theatrical people. But I thought you'd been entertainers for years. Ours are old dances. The little trick that mystified you, I learned from my people. We come from a part of Spain that is deep in the lore of mysticism and magic. My people were alchemists. What do you know of the ancient alchemists of Spain, Dr. Ordway? In a way, they were the fathers of modern chemical science. Their chief objectives were a means of turning base metals into gold. And... and prolonging life indefinitely. 
Have you ever considered the possibility that uh, some of these medieval scientists may have achieved success? What's behind this nonsense, Bragger? Who are you? What are you really after? Take me to Kathleen at once. She has already gone. I think you better go at once, dear. All right. You know exactly what you ought to do? Yes. Afterwards, go straight home. I mean, to Carson's home. Remember, you do not know his death is not a suicide, understand? Yes. Why did you leave his home? I was confused and I wanted to think, so I got in my car and drove around. Huh? You must be careful, dear. Because of the money, they are likely to suspect you. I don't want to frighten you, but you better be prepared. I know. Come on. I'll take you to your car this way. I didn't invite Ordway here. He forced himself on me. Not now, Miguel. You won't be afraid to go home by yourself? Well, I came by myself, and it would be dangerous if we were seen together now. Good night, darling. Good night.
Ah, oh, the doctor. Come on in. Why, I just dropped by to see how Kathleen is. Oh. I presume she turned up all right. Yeah, I caught her between disappearances. We had our talk. <laughs> between disappearances? Yeah, she arrived at her father's at 5 o'clock this morning. She'd just been driving around. How do you mean she, she's disappeared again? Oh, I phoned her father's. Someone told me she was over here. Yeah, maybe she'll show up later. Uh, uh, doctor, I understand you went to see the Braggers Act last night. Yes. Uh, what do you know about them? Oh, nothing much, except they're supposed to make themselves invisible. <laughs> Everyone on this case is able to make themselves invisible. There's some hot coffee there. Pour yourself some. Thanks, I need it. I was up all night chasing shadows. <laughs> That's too bad. I had a splendid night myself. You did? Where? I expected to find this room all torn to pieces. Haven't you been trying to find a set gun or anything like that? You weren't in your hotel room all night. <laughs> well, that's quite obvious, isn't it? Is there any reason why I should have been? I suppose you were driving around with Kathleen. No, no, but oh, I didn't like that. <sighs> Look here, Ordway. I haven't been sleeping. Yes, I, you mentioned that, remember? I mean, I've got a line on you. This isn't your town, and I don't want any of your cute nip-ups. Nip-ups? <laughs> I don't want you playing detective. Murder may be fun for you, but it's a lot of hard work for me. Captain, how did you happen to go into police work? Oh, I don't know. Other lines have their ups and downs, but crime is uh, dependable. I tried that. We look for a set gun, too. Registered letter for Mr. Cosmo. Oh, I'll sign for it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it's from a hotel in Reno, office of the manager. Oh, is that nice? To open other people's mail? Well, somebody's got to open it for them. <laughs> Something the Carsons left in their honeymoon suite. <laughs> what is it? What is it? A will? Exactly. Dated the day before yesterday. Drawn up by a Reno attorney. <laughs> Carson left everything to Kathleen. And it looks like plenty. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Massey. Oh, hello, Dr. Hello. Oh, how are you, Mr. Massey? Well, I, I don't want to bother you. I just want to know if Kathleen was here. Here? Well, if she isn't, I'll just run along. No, 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 no. Come on in. Come on in. Uh, shall we go into the study? <laughs> well, of course. Sure. If you want to go into the study, <laughs> this is Kathleen's house, and I'm sure she'd want you to make yourselves at home. Well, how charming of her. Yes, yes. <laughs> Captain Burtz was just saying before you got here that he's never been on a case where everyone was so polite and so charming. Yes, well, Kathleen has nice friends. Yeah, yes. nice, but impulsive. Yeah, well. I've been looking over Carson's morning mail. Well, I should get down to my office and start looking over mine, if you don't mind. That letter contained the will. Oh, good. I'm glad that turned up. I was hoping it would. You knew about the will, then? Oh, yes, of course. I told you I'd check those bars. The woodwork is untouched. You interested in woodwork, Captain Birch? So you're not by any chance a cabinet maker, are you? No, are you? Oh, yeah, it's been one of my hobbies for years. You know, I've built secret cabinets into my study. I've built them so well, I can't even find them myself. <laughs> How extremely oh, yeah. interesting. But if you recall, we were talking about Carson's will. Oh, 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 yes. Well, you know, he promised to make a new will, leaving everything to Kathleen. I see. That was part of the marriage contract, then. Oh, yes. Oh, oh. As a matter of fact, he was going to put some money into my business, too. But, of course, the poor boy never had a chance. Oh, what a pity. Now, your business will have to struggle along on whatever Kathleen can spare from the couple of million she inherits. <laughs> well, that's a quaint way of putting it. I got the enlargements. Oh, good. Thanks. <coughs> Let's see what we've got here. A. One marked A is the bullet removed from Carson's body. B is the one that was fired from the gun that you found lying beside the body, Doctor. Yeah. And you see... Oh, yes, they... that's very plain, isn't it? You know, of course, that all small arms have either rifled or grooved uh, barrels, you know. Now, these grooves, although they're made by automatic cutters, no two of them are exactly the same, because sometimes microscopic particles of steel get in between the cutter and the groove, you see, and they make little irregularities. Oh, but that's astounding. Well, right? isn't it? Yes. Now, the groove of the barrel leaves these indentations on the bullet, and that individualizes each gun. I call them the fingerprints of the gun. Now, look here. Let me show you. Excuse me, would no, you please? No, certainly. Now, you see? In this enlarged microscopic photograph, 
shows that this bullet, taken from Carson's body, has entirely different markings from this one. Mm -hmm. And that proves that Carson couldn't possibly have been killed by the gun that was found beside him. Can you see them? Oh, yes. Uh, are you following Mr. Massey, Captain Birch? Oh, well, very often the untrained eye doesn't notice such minute differences. I see you've made quite a study of ballistics, too, Mr. Massey. Oh, well, guns have fascinated me ever since I was a little boy. I I've got a very good collection. I'd like to show them to you sometime. Mm, fine. Show them to me now. Now. What are you doing here? I just came to work, sir. My hours are from noon until 8. I don't sleep in. The wife and I have a little place in Glendale. How long have you worked here? Only six months for Mr. Carson. But I've been in the house for 17 years. 17. You've been in the house since 1927, then? Yes, sir. You see, I'm always sold with the property. Sold with the property? Exactly. I prefer it that way. People are ephemeral, but houses are permanent. Huh? I mean, people move or give up housekeeping, or their new wife dislikes you, or they die like Carson. And then I like familiar surroundings. It's easier for me to adjust myself to new faces than new places. What do you know? Is there a name for such people? <laughs> to a psychiatrist, I am definitely a type. Am I not, Dr. Ordway? Oh, yes. Yes. We have you cataloged. Unswerving loyalty to a house rather than its occupants indicates something feline in my nature, no doubt. Hey, there's a trap door here under this rug. There, yeah, a small room lined with empty shelves. A door leading into the main part of the basement. If you came with the foundations, you knew about this. Yes, sir. You knew that a murder was committed in here behind a locked door, yet you didn't mention it. No, sir. Why not? I considered doing so, but on deliberation, I concluded that to mention it would only be cloud and befuddle you, sir. I'm afraid he's right, Captain. Yes, the murderer didn't get in or out that way. They're not kidding you, Skipper. Oh, be quiet, will you? It's obvious no one could go down there, close this trap door, and replace the carpet. And yet... How did you know about this? Oh, well, that was pretty simple. I, I saw the ridges in the rug. Hello? Ah, oh, fine. Well, don't leave there for ten minutes. It's your daughter. She's over at your house. We'll go over and have a chat with her. At the same time, I'll take a look at that gun collection. Oh, well, I don't know whether I... Banning. Come oh, on, Mr. Oh, Massey. All right. Oh, all right, doctor. Oh, Captain Birch. I don't see how the killer could have got out of that room anyway, except for the window. Oh, of course, if you put a cabinet maker to work... Didn't you say you were on a vacation? That's right. Will you do me a favor and get back on it? Sit down, Bob. Help yourself. I really need this after standing off the police department for three hours. What do they want? They want somebody to say I do it. It's sweet of you, Bob. What is? Worrying about me. I am worried. And you are, too. This being brittle and facetious isn't like you, Kathleen. It's an act. It's a way of telling the world you're not afraid. But you are. You're right, Bob. I am frightened. You know you can trust me. Would you like to make a break for it? You know how I've always felt about you. We could go to Rio. Oh, you're a crazy lunatic, Bob. But I love you for that escape to Rio. Did you really think I'd kill Gordon? Well, I knew you didn't love him. The way the police have been hounding you made me wonder. I liked Gordon, and that is the way I thought he was. And I don't deny that I wouldn't have married him if he hadn't been rich. Unfortunately, the police know that. Who told them? Servants, probably, and Father's difficulties aren't exactly a secret. So you married Carson? Gordon offered to put money into the business. He knew he was throwing it away, but it was a bid for me and a generous one. Do you have any idea who killed him? No. Unless it was that David Lee. Oh, no. He was standing beside me when we tried to break into the study. Then why did Birch arrest him? I don't know. But I still think it would be a good idea to get right away from here. Don't you understand, Kathleen? I'm asking you to marry me. 
I'm very fond of you, Bob, but I'm not in love with you. And I may as well tell you now that when all this is settled, I'm going to marry Miguel. Rog? But you've only known him such a short time. Oh, does that mean anything? Perhaps not. There's something strange, almost sinister about him. It's part of their build-up, that's all. I wonder if it is. How long did you take to discover you loved each other? Oh, weeks ago. And you married Cost. Now that he's dead, you're going to marry Braga. We'll admit Carson's murder was pretty convenient for Braga. Braga, a vaudeville illusionist, might know how to get in and out of a locked room. Behave, Bob. It's strange what love will do to you. A few minutes ago, I was ready to marry you, even if you were a killer. Now you're ready to marry Braga, even if he's one. Please, Bob, don't even whisper such things. You might cause terrible trouble for all of us. All right, darling. Hello, hello there. Good afternoon, Dr. Ordway. May I speak to you for a moment? Oh, sure, of course. Sit down. How's Kathleen? Have you seen her today? Yes. I'm worried about something. I mean about Kathleen. I believe she's in trouble. Yes, I wouldn't be surprised. Dr. Ordway, I'd like to speak to you about the Braggas. Did you notice anything peculiar about them last night? Yes. But what do you mean? Well, I mean, do you think it's possible for people to make themselves invisible? No, no. <laughs> no, but it would be convenient at times. No, I'm not kidding. Do you know that no one has ever seen them in the daytime? Excuse me, I'll, I'll be running along. Don't let Burke scare you here. What was he doing here? Spoiling my vacation. Sit down, Captain. Thanks. Right. Glad you happened along. Another minute, he had me thinking about that Carson case again. <laughs> Waiter. You look tired, Cap. What about a, some refreshments, huh? I don't think so, thanks. Oh, you might bring me a Coke. Put a couple of jiggers of rum in it. Uh, scotch and soda for me. Yes, sir. <laughs> look at those folks. If I'd listen to my dad, I'd be lying around here enjoying myself like other people. You would? What do you, what do you want you to do? Uh, go in the real estate business. <laughs> That's a novel idea. Uh, not novel, but good. Uh. <sighs> Boy, this stuff's going to give me a lift. Well, it'll lift a lot of people right up onto that diving board. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I, uh, I wanted to talk about the Braggers. That is, if you don't mind. There's something odd about them. Do you know they've never been seen in daylight? <laughs> Who started that? Oh, well, it's a fact. Furthermore, they were offered a movie job at twice what they're getting at the Friars Glen, and they turned it down. Why? You tell me. Because you gotta work daytime in pictures. Are you serious? <sighs> oh, I don't think I am. I'm beginning to wonder. Do you know Braga's sister becomes invisible in their act? <laughs> now, please do me a favor and don't laugh. I thought maybe you'd understand. If I'd only wanted to be laughed at, I'd stay down at headquarters. All right, Cap, go ahead. I promise I won't laugh again. This afternoon, I went up to their place in the mountains. They weren't in, so I wandered around. They didn't sleep there last night. Are you sure? Oh, they'd rumpled up the bedding and tried to crease the sheets, but you know as well as I do that you can't fake a thing like that. The bed doesn't look slept in unless it's been slept in. Yeah, but what's the point of it? The point is, if Braga can make himself invisible, he could have gone in and out of Carson's study. Think that one over. Yes, you may have something there. You bet I have. Captain Birch, please. 
Hello, Birch. This is Dr. Ardway. I'm speaking now from Carson's study. There's something over here very interesting that you should see. Well, you'll find out when you get here. I see you moved the bars. I thought you were wasting your time or I would have helped you. No, you helped me enough by letting me in. Come down here, I want to show you something. You see, the, the bars are sunk in the upper and the lower sills here, but there's been a portion of this lower sill removed uh, to permit two of those bars to drop down, you see. I see. Well, what's this metal plate for, to hold the bars up again? That's right. That metal plate works on this spring here, you uh -huh. see? Uh-huh. Slides back and forth like that. Mm -hmm. Now, the, uh, the contact for the spring is probably on the outside. Here, let me show you here. Now, you just press that spring in the right place there, and uh, this metal plate slides back, you see, and lets the bars drop. Huh. Well, that's pretty neat. It would take a cabinet maker to install a job like that. Yeah, that's right. Considerable time, too. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Now that you've discovered how the killer got out of a supposedly sealed room, does that tell you who it is? No. But it's a step in that direction. Burtz will be along in a few minutes. Are you going to wait? Certainly not. I only came along to let you in. Well, he'll have the place to himself. I've got to run along. Say, wait a minute. I resent these half-confidences, Ordway. You only take me along as far as you can use me. That makes us even. Well, what have I been holding out? The braggers. How do they work that dance? <laughs> I knew I'd tell you. You don't think by any chance that Bragg is a cabinet maker? Why not? He wasn't above feeding me knockout drops last night. Oh, this is getting better and better. Do you mind telling me why he did it? Well, I want to take Kathleen home to see the police, but uh, uh, apparently she had something she wanted to do first. And how did she explain that today? Well, I've had bad luck reaching her today. Uh, of course, I could have told Birch and let him question her. Oh, no, no, don't do that, old man. At least not until after you've talked to her. Now, I can get hold of her. Come to my place. Well, one o'clock be too late. I'm tied up early, and I promise to have her there. All right.
Hello, Dr. Ordway. Oh, hello. Hello, Kathleen. Where's Jeff? I don't know. I found the door unlocked, so I came in. I've been looking for him. He isn't anywhere in the apartment. Oh, that's funny. Or probably he's gone to the neighbors to get some ice. But I've been here 20 minutes. Superstitions of medieval Europe. Black magic. Creatures of the night. Oh, nice reading. Werewolves and vampires. <laughs> the case against the braggers. Jerome wrote this. In it, he's trying to prove that the braggers are vampires. He claims they made their debut in a royal performance at the Madrid Opera in 1650. 1650. Which makes them almost 300 years old. They have never been seen by day. That's right. I never have seen Miguel in the daytime. They sleep in earth-filled chests. They have no mirrors in their dressing rooms. Vampires abhor mirrors because they cast no reflections. A vampire can make itself invisible at will. Oh, it's all absurd. I'm not so sure about that here. Read this last paragraph in the typewriter. What defense is there against the scourge of vampirism? The answer is none. For the safety of the community, they must be destroyed. The chest they occupy by day when they are in a cataleptic state must be opened. And stakes driven through their hearts. Captain Birch, please. Dr. Ordway calling. You don't really think that Jeff intends to do such a horrible thing? Well, get hold of him as quickly as possible, will you? Tell him to meet me at the Braggers' home. That's right. Let me have the keys to your car. You take a cab and go home. I'll call you as soon as I can. I'm going with you. You've only been there once and you'll never find it alone. All right, come on. Stop him. Who? Who, Jeff? Who? But I couldn't.
what's this vampire stuff all about, Ordway? Just a publicity stunt. It all goes back to their dance. I, I saw tonight how they do it. Oh, you did? Yeah. I climbed up on the catwalk above the ceiling of the Friars Glen. I got a bird's eye view of the whole proceedings. Hmm. down again the same way. I had to stay up there while he took his contraptions down and put them in that huge trunk again. Why in a trunk? To maintain the vampire illusion. You see, if anyone saw that trunk coming in, they'd think the braggers were inside of it. I hope this will teach you not to play around in coffins. Jerome cooked up this idea, didn't he? Yes. He saw us dance in Cuba. He said if we come to the United States that he would get us some sensational publicity. Then he set us up in his house and told us not to go out in the daytime. And he was going to place a definite charge against you as vampires. Yes. You see, Jerome realized tonight that his idea had backfired into an epidemic of murders. By the way, where'd you actually sleep? In a little guest cottage that cannot be seen from this house. Is it all right to go now, Captain Birch? Impersonating a vampire should be some sort of a crime, but <laughs> I don't know what it is. Go ahead. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Dr. Ordway. Good night. Well, let's see how our prisoner's getting along. He's patched up enough to take him back to town. He admits killing Carson, Luger, and Jerome. Dr. Rodway interrupted him before he could polish off the brightness. See, Rankaray wanted us to believe that Jerome had gone insane on the subject of vampires. That killed the braggers and then himself. Is that right? I wanted Kathleen. I killed Carson to get her. She said that she was going to marry Braga. I decided to kill him, too. Jerome was just a fall guy, someone to pin it on. Take him out. <laughs> Charming fellow, that Rencare. But I don't think he'd really have driven those stakes through the Bragas. Oh, he didn't cut them up for toothpicks. Well, I guess you're right. Yes, sir, this would make a wonderful subdivision. That castle over there could be the clubhouse. Put in some more trees and roads. <laughs> yes, but half of your lots would be perpendicular. Well, what's wrong with perpendicular lots? People are buying them every day in California. Uh -huh. 